Hi, it's Elise here at the Bowman Library in our teen section with a whole new teen book spotlight. So for this week, we're taking a look at a genre that I know it's very polarizing. People either love it or they're not the biggest fan of it. And even in the people who love it, there's the people that love series of it. And then there are the people that don't love series of it. Or there's even the people who don't like it because they feel like everything's a series. And sometimes you just want a book that has a beginning, middle, and end in the same book. Like when you close it, you get to the last page, you know exactly what happened. We're talking about fantasy. But for this week, we're going to take a look at books that are standalone fantasy titles. These are books that are fantasy without the series. Not only that, for our fantasy books this week, we have such a wide variety of fantasy because if you're like me, I like fantasy, but when it starts getting into like dragons and wizards and things like that, I don't really go for that. So we have a huge incredible variety of fantasy that you may not even believe existed, but it does. So let's get started. So first off, this is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So Lady Catherine was raised to become queen, but all she really wants to do is just open her own bakery. When she is sent to meet the King of Hearts to start their relationship, she meets the court jester, whose name is Jest, and she finds him way more interesting and charming than the king. As she starts to fall in love with Jest, her mother is not happy and she's going to do anything and everything in order to make sure that Catherine marries the king. Jest has his own secret mission though that competes with the relationship that has developed between him and Catherine and yeah, I don't want to say anything more because I don't want to ruin it. This is filled with magic, twists and turns, adventure. There's a touch of romance. This before Alice in Wonderland story will shed so much light onto the character that becomes known as the villain, the Queen of Hearts. This is Heartless. The Siren by Kiera Cass. So when her family was drowning, Colin was saved by the ocean, but then she had to repay her debt by becoming a siren. 80 years later though, she is still filled with the shame and disgust for what she has to do in order to keep the ocean fed. She has to lead sailors to their deaths. When she meets a boy though, she starts to fall in love with him and she finds it harder to juggle her responsibility to the ocean and her feelings for him. And she finds herself suffering consequences no matter what choice she makes. This Greek mythology inspired fantasy is filled with romance and it's all about finding oneself, the siren. Girls made of snow and glass. This one's so good. So when Mina was younger, she became very sick and in order to save her, her sorcerer father actually cut out her heart and replaced it with a glass one. And while she was alive, she was then unable to love or receive love. Her father, because he basically like saved his daughter, he gains so much notoriety that he gains the attention of King Nicholas, whose wife just died. And he wants Mina's dad to make a child out of snow in the image of his late wife, which naturally her father does and succeeds. The child is then named Lynette. When Mia gets older though, she finds herself married to King Nicholas and raising Lynette, who is made out of snow. But Lynette doesn't know like who or like what she really is. When she turns 15 though, she finds out what the deal is and Mina decides there's going to be an issue it, and it's a killed or be killed situation because technically they're both the queen and there can only be one. Lynette though 
doesn't see it that way. This is told through both of their points of view. This fantasy based off of Snow White goes beyond just the story you think you know of Snow White. This is Girls Made of Snow and Glass. So this is Burn by Patrick Ness. And before I get into what it's about, this kind of falls into a growing trend in YA that's this historical fantasy that we have some fantasy that's coming out that they take something that actually happens in history and then they make a fantasy twist on it. So it's 1957, it's Washington State in the Cold War between the United States and the USSR, which is now known as Russia, is growing every day. Sarah's father, who is a farmer, is forced to hire a dragon to help on their farm. And that's a thing in 1957 that you can hire dragons to come work on your farm. The thing is though, Sarah's family is so poor that the only one they can afford is a Russian blue named Casimir, which is not the most popular choice in their town given the tension between Russia and the United States. Casimir though is rumored to know of a prophecy that may change history. And he starts to show an interest in Sarah as she may be the key to stopping this predicted apocalypse. While all of this is going on, another team named Malcolm is making his way from Canada down to Sarah's town. Malcolm is an assassin from a dragon worshiping cult who is on a mission to save dragonkind. These two storylines slam together in an action-packed historical fantasy that you will not want to put down. This is Burn. The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. And if you know anything about Holly Black, you are in for a fantasy treat. So siblings Hazel and Ben live in Fairfield, which is not your typical town. It is filled with fae. And they give humans abilities, but they also make deals and bargains with them. And not only are there fae in this town, in the forest, like right on the edge of the town, there is a glass coffin that holds the horned prince Severin, along with this creepy mysterious monster lurking in the shadows. When the glass coffin is shattered and the prince is set free, the precious balance that was keeping everything in check is now damaged and out of control. It's up to Ben and Hazel to try to bring that balance back, but they need to face their secrets, desires, and fears in order to be successful. This dark adventure fantasy will leave you guessing as well as cheering for our main characters as they try to bring peace back to their town, but they are also in this incredibly awkward position where they are finding out more about themselves and each other. And there are maybe things they just never really wanted to realize. The darkest part of the forest. And our last one is the lie tree. And I will tell you this. If you are looking for a non-traditional fantasy, this may be the perfect choice. So this is set in Victorian England. 14 year old Faith is moved with her family to a remote island where her renowned father, the Reverend Sunderly, wants to participate in a paleontolog paleontological jig dig that is happening there. Faith is the dutiful daughter, but she is more interested in science than what she's allowed to be for a girl, especially for her age and when and where she's living. When she starts to notice that her father is acting strange, he asks her to hide a discovery. He has found a tree that seems to feed on lies and it rewards the liar with visions. When her father is found dead from an apparent suicide, Faith does not believe that is what happened. And she decides that she is going to use this tree to help her find out what really happened by trying to find a vision. This leads to secrets being revealed and Faith becoming obsessed. This dark, historical, and intelligent fantasy will leave you breathless. Again, it has an integral plot. If that's what you're looking for, make sure you pick up the lie tree. 
So these are just six of the standalone fantasies that we have here at the library. We do have more though. So if you're looking for one, but maybe not one of these six, feel free to come on by and we will help you find that perfect standalone fantasy that will make you read cover to cover as fast as you can. I hope you tune back next week when we have a whole new teen book spotlight with a completely different theme and I hope you have an amazing week.